on round two of the action open, uh, which is an action chess for this game 30. I was playing Shy Elder. He's a 1560. Uh, my rating is 2200, approximately. And um, I was black. And so here we go. Here's the game. With e4. C5. This is Sicilian. Um, the reason I do Sicilian is whenever you play someone that's much lower rated than you, I mean, he's, I mean, he's literally uh, 600 points rated, lower rated than me. You, I need imbalances. I have to have imbalances to win. And Sicilian, it's hard to be Sicilian for imbalances. E5 is pretty good too, but um, I, I'm just I'm just better with the Sicilian, so I do that. Okay, so it looks like okay, looks like it opens Sicilian, and yes, yes it is. So this is all standard here. Attack his pawn, he defends, and develops. A6, that's a knight orf. I'll play this many times and have pretty good results with it actually. Um, he's doing the ink well. He did the English attack, but he's doing it kind of strange. Uh, normally, they play this to stop any knight g4, but he played here. Um, I could play knight g4, but he just go bishop g5, and it didn't. You know, this is just kind of wasting time. I want to get developed. I don't want to move my knight everywhere, and he's only and she, he has four pieces. I only have one, so I don't. It just, that didn't feel right to me to do that. So uh, I said, well, now this isn't developing either, except um, it, is, it has a threat. I'm threatening his pawn, right? Attack, attack the pawn knight. He has to move it and then eat the pawn. So I have a threat. Uh, plus, it does actually help me develop because then my bishop can go here and put pressure there, as well as support eventual d5, which, as most of you know, if black can get d5 in successfully, that usually gives him a quality in, in the Sicilian. So actually, it is a developing move, and... Plus, if he castles the queen side, I can use it to, you know, have attack. So it's pretty flexible. And my center is solid. So it's not like he can burst through. I'm, well, everything's really solid. So, so B5. It's one of the things about chess is, you know, there's principles. But what really matters is what's the best move in the position. Regardless of what the general principle says. Because sometimes the best move is not it's totally against general principle. He defends his pawn. Okay, fine. It's not really a good way to do it, though. He should do this still. Because that stops here, defends here, and he's castle queen, and that's pretty standard. The thing is, this gets in his way, because now, now he has his half-open d-file, but he blocked it with his bishop. Um, it's basically, it's clumsy. It's kind of with bottom line, and it doesn't really, can't really go anywhere. It's kind of stuck. So, um, F3 had been way better. I was happy to see that, because I'm like, oh, okay, sure. I'll keep developing. I'll keep Keep, yeah, I still have, now I'm still threatening this maybe, although it's not really a threat because yeah I can win this, but you can win this, so that's only a trade actually. But still, I was I was happy with this so far. Okay, he finally does a three. Um, I like playing h5 against the English attack because g4 g5 is really annoying because this is a really good piece for black for defense and offense, and if he could push around. And then, um, it's not really favorable for Black, honestly. And a lot of times, I'm quite safe in the center, so I don't care that we can do my king side. Um, not in this position, I don't, anyways. So I play h5, and I, I beat a master playing h5, and, uh, um, so, like I said, it does well. He goes here, he's not even castled, so I'm not, uh, can't move a piece twice in the opening, and, for what? Did not really get anything from that? I said, okay, well, that's no threat, nothing going on. Okay, I'll keep developing. Get my pieces out. Uh, this is a common motif, A4, for the white side, except not in this position, it's not. Um, you do this, like, in, like, standard, uh, Shemenigan, where you go, like, bishop e3, bishop e2, castle king side. Okay, this is a very common idea. But the thing is, you probably should castle queen, and of course, now he can't castle queen with that move. So it's kind of like he's, it's almost like he's mixing systems. So I thought, like, okay, sure, I'll take your knight. Yeah, thanks. I'm not gonna take. I'm not gonna take. Give him a great, out, you know, squares for his rook. I don't think so. So he goes to the center. Okay, that's good. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, he's starting to be a pawn. Which and I'm like, well, I don't want to go here. No knight attacks my queen. That'd be annoying. Uh, here, well, bishop three would be annoying. A five be annoying too. So no, that's that's no good. That's no good. Can I just sack it? No, because it attacks my bishop, so no, I can't sack it. I said, well, how about just d5 then? Why not? Because 
because then the bishop protects the pawn. Um, you can't, you know, I just recapture the bishop. Okay, this looks okay to me. So I was, I was pretty happy with this mission so far, uh, the opening. I think at least of quality. This is the strategical blunder, C4. Um, if I take the pawn, he'd be really happy with that. There's like, no way I'm taking that pawn. Um, but the thing is, I can take here, and now, of course, I can't take, I can't win this pawn because he's peeing my queen, right? So, like, it's pawn safe, but that's not, that's not the point. The point is, now he has this isolated pawn, so he has worse pawns in the end game, and I have all sorts of black, great black squares. So he's going to have serious issues on the, on the black squares, which, so, of course, I immediately work on the black squares after he did that. So the first thing you do is queen b6. I don't care about a5, I'll just go back to a7. So you can do it if he wants. Um, and then of course, this besides developing the queen and getting out of the pin, but now this is a, whoops, now this is a threat, right? Because uh, now I'm not pinned. It has another sub threat, and if he castles kingside, e5, I don't win the knight. So all, again, this move gives him all sorts of problems. Matter of fact, at this point, I think black's actually a little bit better after this move, queen b6. He has a threat, but it it doesn't work though, because I had now this is a good move. Um, because well, first of all, if he moves the knight and doesn't protect the bishop, I just eat the bishop, right? And he has no. See, can he go anywhere? No. Well, no, no not really. His only threat you go here, right? Because if I do queen take, he can go check. But I, I don't have to go queen take. I can go knight take. So it doesn't work. Um, and if you, and if he. Defend, you can do this, right? Because the bishop takes, I take, and I take. But then bishop c5, and he can't cast the king side, and he's getting killed in dark squares. Um, honestly, the best move might be this, actually. Bishop here. Because um, then you go h3, and come back to e3, and maybe castle. That's kind of clumsy, but that's what he, that's the best he got. This is probably the best move, actually. Bishop g1. Not really intuitive, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, but he did not play that. And so, so that, that's probably a, it's almost certainly a big blunder. He plays this, which I'm not even sure what that does, honestly. He has defensive pawn, but so what? You got he has far bigger, worse problems than that pawn. But like, okay, sure, yeah, I'll, give it, I'll, I'll take that bishop. Uh, okay, so take take, and of course, well, it's a strong pressure, threatening his piece again. And the only way to defend is this. It's the only way to defend. Uh, I go rook here. I thought about castling, but. Uh, I said, you know what? We might be going in end game if we're real fast, and if we do, then center is actually better if we're going in end game. So Rick D eight. Uh, okay, he he castles, you know, because there's pressure on D four, massive pressure, and now I have a combination to win a pawn. So I'm okay, because um, now it reveals the rook on the knight. He pretty much has to take bishop take a course. Now, we should know the bishop protects the pawn, so we can't go for the pawn. And I still want to protect this pawn, right? So, of course, take the queen. Now, of course, oh, and be careful, right? There's a rook here, but he has no, there's nowhere to move the bishop. It's actually since the queen's on pre, right? So his queen is hanging. He can't move the bishop anywhere. He has to deal with, and plus, I'm threatening to infiltrate his king, which is also a problem. So he doesn't like any of that, so he took here, which, you know, it makes sense. My queen is going to be really dangerous if he didn't take it. Now, here... If he just plays this, I mean, he's down a pawn, but, I mean, he can play on, right? Because I can't win this pawn, because I can, but he'll just he'll just go to the recover and then get his pawn back. Um, so this is the best move, and it'd still be a game. I'm better come pawn up, but it'd still be a game. He goes here, which is a really serious error. I'm like, he's going to double. Well, okay, yeah, let's go, you double, go ahead. So he does, he does, he does double. Um, but he doesn't see... I have a massive uh, strategical idea that uh, will basically kill him. Okay, it's going to put him in a kind of zook swing position. Um, so here we go. I sack my rook. I pin the rook. And what, what you should note is, first of all, he has he can't move his king out, right? can't go here because of pawn. If he goes here, I just eat a free rook. If he goes here, I eat a free rook. And if he goes anywhere, if he moves his king anywhere, I get a free rook. And same thing, his rook can't leave because I get a free rook. So, which means the king can't move, then he can only go here, here. Which means all he can move is his pawns. But I can do, you know, I got lots of stuff I can do. 
So he's, a, he's in a zigzag. So even though he's not material, he's actually he's being killed. So he goes, uh, okay, what do I do here? What do I do here? He goes, uh, oh, trade pawns. I do G5. The reason I'm doing this is because um, he can't do anything, so I have a king side majority, so king side is a natural place to advance. Plus, I don't want him tying me down with H4. So I did G5, so before he could tie me down. Um, then he goes, he goes here. Now the thing is, uh, when you're up material, up P I'm not attacking the up material. Well, I am up material, but when you're up material, sometimes, a lot of times, it's better to keep your pawns because the more pawns you have, it's easier to queen. Plus, if you win his pawns, then, you know, then it's really easy to queen, too. So, the other thing, too, is I don't want to open any lines. I mean, yeah, because he might, if I open lines, if Rick can move and sacrifice, I mean, he can't save it anyways. A sacrifice that maybe give me problems. So, keep the lines closed, he, he ba basically gets no play. But keeping the lines closed, and so he, again, he can't move the rooker, he can't go anywhere, so he's moving the pawns. But it doesn't really help him. I go here, and the reason why I did that, because now my king can move. See, now my king can, you know, go after these guys. That, that's the primary reason I did that. Uh, and and he, he can really resign here. He goes here, king d7, my king's going to pick up his pawns. My, my king side can, you know, march at will. I can march on queen side too, but I don't, don't need to. And he can't go anywhere. And so, what I realize, he's helpless, and so he uh, gives it up. That's why he resigned. Which is interesting, because he's up in exchange, but not really, because I can get it back anytime I want. So, um, anyway, that was game two.